Hello everyone. Now the chances are that you're probably engaging with the news quite a bit more than you ever were before the COVID-19 pandemic. So that might be that you're watching more television news, you might be listening to more news on the radio, engaging with um, news websites a bit more often or using social media to check on the news perhaps more frequently than you were um, before. So I wanted to do a quick video today about Gautam and Rouge's news values. Now in 1965, Gauteng and Rouge published um, a series of news values that suggests that all news broadcasters or publishers follow a certain list of kind of values that, that they use to choose which news stories to cover and which to omit, which to leave out. So <clears throat> if you can imagine all events happening around the world in a 24 hour cycle, the news can't possibly cover every single one of them. You'd end up with a five hour long news broadcast at six o'clock in the evening or a newspaper of about 400 pages long. It's never going to happen. It'd be too difficult to publish and no one would, would read all of it. So they just choose the stories that they believe are most um, relevant for their target audience. So here in Britain, um, the BBC or other mainstream news organisations will choose news stories that they think best fits the needs of the nation or, or that best fits what they consider to be what we need or, or, or what we yearn, what we need to know. So Gautam Arush's news values are, are, are these. Um, so the first one really is something called threshold or amplitude. So the bigger the story, the bigger the effect uh, a news event has on people, um, the more likely it is to be in the news. So if you take the COVID-19 um, outbreak of recent months, um, that's more likely to be on the news because it has affected so many thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people worldwide. Um, and that's why it makes our news as number one story um, every day. Now, <clears throat> another news value is known as frequency. So if a news um, event happens, um, within a kind of time frame that's easily coverable by the news, easily covered by the news um, broadcasters, then it's more likely to find its way into our news broadcast. For example, the government does a, um, a coronavirus update, daily update at five o'clock every afternoon, and the news will then cover that or cover the main parts of it at, on, on the six o'clock news. Um, and that's kind of convenient in terms of its frequency because it means that they can, they can cover that fairly quickly. Um, and it means that news can be covered on a kind of 24 hour basis. They will cover the day's news um, frequently and with that kind of frequency. So <clears throat> next we have something called unambiguity. So if a story is un ambiguous, then it can be seen in a number of different ways. And the facts um, aren't always very black and white and it can be interpreted in a number of ways. So if a story is unambiguous, this is what's happened and you can't really argue with it. This is factual, it's statistics. So when the news broadcaster says um, an earthquake has happened in this part of the world, um, and it's of this magnitude on the Richter scale, that's unambiguous. You can't argue with it. It's happened. It's proved that it's happened and it's affected this many people. So those sorts of stories are more likely to make the news because they're more straightforward and they're less ambiguous. Now, meaningfulness is the next news value. Now, certain stories have more cultural meaning. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected our culture in Britain in Europe and the world as a whole. So it's affected our culture, our economy, our working um, situation, our schooling, etc. So it's, it has deep meaning for every single individual in this country. Therefore, it's likely to be number one news story covered on the TV news, which is, which is what you would expect. It's, it has the most kind of meaning at the moment for most people. Next news value is consonants. Now, if um, we are expecting something to happen, if it's in our heads as if it's a, an event that's likely to happen or on the verge of happening, then that's more likely to be covered. So an example of this um, might be 
if you were to think last year of the, of the terrible fires in Australia, um, the government's response to those fires was covered because the audience was expecting the government and the world to react to the fires. So we were expecting a new story along those lines. And that's what we call um, consonants. It's, it's things that are, are in our minds, they're in our consciousness, and we are expecting them to, to be covered by the news. We're expecting them to happen. Um, next, um, unexpectedness. So if a story is particularly unex unexpected, that's more likely to be covered. An earthquake, a landslide, an avalanche, um, any story like that, a tsunami that's unexpected and out of the blue, that's more likely to be covered in the news because it's a shock to our systems. It's a shock to governments. It's a shock to emergency services. So it's more unexpected. Using the example of the COVID-19 outbreak, um, that wasn't completely unexpected. Um, and it wasn't also expected. It was, I mean, we've had global pandemics in the past. We're living through one now. Um, and it's expected that there will be others in the future, but we don't know when, we don't know of, of to what amplitude, we don't know how, how they're going to affect our lives or how serious um, they're likely to be. So that's, there's a level of unexpect, unexpectedness with, with, any, with any news story. However, um, <clears throat> the way in which, the, the extent to which it's affected our lives is, has been unexpected. We didn't ever expect something to, to, shake, to shake our systems quite as this has done. Um, so in that regard, it's an unexpected story. Next news value is continuity. So if a story has made the news once, future events related to it are more likely to make the news. So um, this is, we're living through a perfect example of this. We know that the COVID-19 outbreak isn't going to disappear overnight. Therefore, it will be covered tomorrow. It will be covered the day after, the week after, etc. It's been covered today, it's going to be covered tomorrow, and then we have this continuity of news and anything linked to that, the way that global leaders react to it, the way the emergency services react to it, <clears throat> that's all going to be covered because it's all part of the same big story. Now, the next news value is something known as compositional balance. Now, if you watch the news at six or channel four at seven or at 10 o'clock in the evening, <clears throat> you will be bombarded with a series of very negative stories. Um, quite often uh, death tolls or, um, or strain on the emergency services and there's a level of negativity. Now what you tend to find with the news, with the news broadcast, is that they taper this negativity. Um, the stories with the biggest amplitude um, tend to be quite negative and they hold kind of the most negativity at the top if you like, not always but most often, and then that tends to taper down to a story that's more positive. So a perfect example of this would be last week, um, Captain Tom <clears throat> raising a huge amount of money um, <clears throat> via the internet um, for the NHS. Now that was a, an extremely uplifting story and it, it meant that the negativity of the news was somehow balanced in terms of its composition with something much more uplifting. This story is most likely to be accompanied by stories about the nation coming together at eight o'clock on a Thursday evening to clap our emergency services and key workers. That is another example of a positive story that works to unite us as a nation. It works to show a bit of collectivism as a nation, it gives us a bit of uh, a collective hope um, and a sense of national identity and unity. Um, and that's what we call compositional balance. So news broadcasters do tend to do this in a number of different ways. And some news broadcasters include more positive stories than others do. But it's all to do with their with the composition of their news that they want to show us. Right then. Um, next is something called elite nations or elite people. Now, us in Britain, we tend to get stories about close European allies, France, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, Spain, I could go on. Um, we tend to get our news um, focused on us and them and a bit of the United States as well as wealthier, more developed nations. And we tend to hear news stories about those countries and the people involved. Now, this this partly is to do with many factors, but it might be that we have... Um, lots of workers from from Britain working in those areas 
and we have families who have um, relatives living in those countries. Therefore, we want to know what's going on in those countries. We want to know geographically how things are affecting our closest neighbours and our closest allies and our friends. Um, therefore, we, we it's kind of natural that we want to know about those people and we want to know how that's going to affect our economy or trade relations or cultural relations, artistic relations, you name it. So we tend to hear stories about other countries that are similar to us um, from, from a more wealthy, developed part of the world. Next news value is something called personification, sometimes called personality or character. If stories carry a particular personality or they have a human element, they tend to be more likely to make the news. The story last week of Captain Tom raising that huge amount of money had um, a kind of really optimistic, lovable backstory to it. So there were loads of news companies there queuing up to cover the story because it had an individual at its core who had served for us in the Second World War and had, and had raised that money um, of his own volition and it had caused a widespread kind of nationwide global if you like reaction so there was a personality at the core of that which meant that us as viewers could invest more into the story um, and that's why it was in our news um, quite high up the billing actually another example of this a completely different character is donald trump although he's not our leader um, and although he's across an ocean we still have news covering not just the United States, but things he says. So two days ago, there was controversy over what he said about disinfectant, perhaps um, being used in, in our bodies to get rid of the virus. He shrugged the comments off as, as being a, sar a sarcastic kind of joke. Um, anyway, that was covered in our news because anything attached to Donald Trump has a certain element of controversy to it or there is continuity he makes these comments every day and we as audiences are expecting to hear what he says um, and we're also expecting to hear how the media reacts to what he says because in, in some sort of modern phenomenon he's likely to spin whatever the media says um, to his own benefit um, that in itself is a whole area of, of media studies um, there really so yeah personification or personality um, and the final news value really is negativity so um, news that has a particularly downbeat um, situation attached tend to make the news big tsunamis um, earthquakes any sort of environmental catastrophe is is really negative the current COVID-19 pandemic is a negative story. Um, we need to hear about these awful things that happen um, because it might affect us and it makes us think about the future, makes us think about the past, it makes us re reassess everything, it makes us reflect on how we live our lives. Having said that, you wouldn't want an hour of, of very, very negative news because it would actually skew your view of the world you would end up with a, a very bleak vision of of the of the world and actually when you when you step outside your house and when you talk to your neighbors and you talk to your friends and family the world isn't as negative as the media paints it to be so there is some compositional balance there but but we do hear negative stories more more often now what i wanted to finish with is the idea of, of geography linking with media studies. We in Britain will hear stories of a close proximity to us, British stories, European stories, or how British people and Britons are doing elsewhere. So a story covered last week about how British people around the world were going to get home and, and how they were doing in places like Peru, Argentina, Zimbabwe, you name it, every corner of the earth, British people are there and the news ran a story about how they were going to get home and how they were going to deal with it. Now, if you um, were to watch the news on a mainstream channel in this country, like the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5, you would see them applying the news values and covering similar stories, even in a, in a, sim excuse me, in a similar order. If you then turned on Euro News or Al Jazeera News, and you can find those channels um, on your TV. 
they will give you a completely different set of news stories. Not completely different, but they will give you a, um, a, a different set. Euronews is still likely to cover the COVID-19 outbreak um, because it's a global story. Al Jazeera is likely to have the COVID-19 outbreak as its number one story because it's a global story everywhere in the news. But if you if you think about where Al Jazeera is, is, is centered, which is a Middle Eastern channel, they're also going to cover stories about Ramadan being affected by COVID-19. Um, you'll learn about terrible flooding in Yemen. You'll learn about other um, rising tensions between Iran and the United States, which isn't being covered necessarily as thoroughly by the BBC and Channel 4. You're going to see a whole host of other stories about how the rest of the world is, is um, getting through this challenge but other stories as well that we don't really hear about in Europe. So it's worthwhile doing, and I would urge you to watch Al Jazeera News or Euro News or any other news channel to try and give you an idea of how other news channels around the world cover different stories, because we only see a very, very small sector of what is actually going on in the world. Um, so yeah, interesting thing to look into. Have a look at what's out there. Watch the news um, whenever you can write down the main stories, think about why those stories are included and why they're included in that order. There's always logic to it and there's always a value system attached. So um, happy viewing. Thanks very much.